Welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is uh, February 26th, 2023. Howard, you're looking like you just got back from hunting. I'm hunting uh, millennials. Listen, does anybody really know what day it is? Meaning what? Maybe AI took over and this isn't even us talking. Maybe. Maybe it's too early for that. Oh my goodness. Hey, you know what show you should watch? Gamora. Have you watched that on HBO? Do you even, no. you know, you have no time. You're out volleyballing and swimming. <laughs> I don't have HBO right now, but I'll, I'll check it out. So how's life? That's pretty good. It's probably the worst winter I can remember for Phoenix. What about San Diego? Maybe the worst the ever. The same, the same. Yeah. It's okay. Things will get better. All right. Let us bring us up to date. Yeah. I mean, as we all know, we had a pretty strong start of the year, like in January, almost everything went up and the worst hit stocks from last year were, were the best performing stocks this year, like Tesla and Align and um, Generac, even Nvidia, and then mm -hmm. many, of the, many of the software is the semiconductor index thing went up almost 20% just in January, but at some point, early February, interest rates started to creep up again. They've been mm -hmm. perking up for the entire month of of February. Mm -hmm. And they reached a point at which equities just could not sustain their rally. And they've been they've been pulling back for most of February. Uh, definitely yeah. a lot of equities have had a at least 10, 10, 20 percent pullback in um in February, as, as we can see here, the S&P 500 just tested its 200-day moving average on Friday. I think psychologically, this is an important level for the bulls to kind of step up here. Mm -hmm. Other, otherwise, we're probably looking at a best-case scenario range-bound action until some you know major catalyst shows up. And it's the same with the Qs. Obviously, they're much more dependent on interest rates and interest rates have been rising. I mean, the, the 10 year yield is like almost 4%. Yeah. Year, I mean, I think that the two year yield Ivan had a, hit a new kind of high. I think it was 20 basis points a year ago. It's five, 5%. Five yeah. Right I mean, now. So inverted yield curve. Yeah. Inverted yield curve, not a good sign continues on forever. It seems, um, you know, people say people are bearish, but like I was looking for a chart. It's the most overowned. I'm just looking for some um, some charts I was looking at, but it's kind of overowned the market. I saw a few charts that I was going to share, but you have to trust my uh, word for it. People own more stocks than kind of ever. Uh, millennials are record high credit um, right now. Um, and so are the governments. Governments are record high credit too. Um, yeah, but so millennials have the government. The old people like me are paid down debt to record levels. So there's money out there. It's just the young people are saddled with high stock prices. Uh, you know, if you went into tech, it's kind of a winter. Um, machines are common for your job in tech, um, and uh, it's expensive to own a freaking home. So you're relying on your parents. Kind of a bummer to be a millennial. And um, yeah, the home builders have pulled back. I think we're a slave to rates here. Like, let's be honest. So you got to look for relative strength. Like, you know, you want to see which stocks hold up the best here. So, um, well, currently, uh, you kind of have financials and energy holding a little bit better than the rest. But those, could do better only if we assume that there's not going to be a recession. Correct. And the inverted yield curve kind of means Correct. that. Correct. So someone is wrong here. So uh, they could crash and play catch up financials. And, you know, it's fine to look at relative strength. But remember, these aren't growth companies. So energy and financial will catch up to the downside quickly if the recession you know, happens, you know, all the language switched to soft landing and 
Well, we've seen that caused a sell-off here when the soft lending interest rates are going to disrupt any soft lending. Um, anecdotally, you know, I ride kind of the same routes, my safe routes through Scottsdale, Paradise Valley, Phoenix, and there's more homes for sale. Um, and this was a tight market for a while. And now there's a lot of homes creeping onto the market. Uh, you know, and I ride like 30 miles through, the, through, through three cities here. So it was tight. And I used to comment for a year how, um, you know, there weren't homes on the market. Now you're starting to see them surface in Phoenix, Scottsdale, Paradise Valley. So that's anecdotal. Um, but still, for my eyes, you know, we're seeing the effects of rising rates. Right? First, you get the depress. First, you get the uh, crash in in transactions, but then people realize they want to sell, uh, and you know, then people start lowering their prices. So we'll see. Listen, a lot of consumer stocks, Nike, Lulu, kind of rallied, but now they've stalled. Uh, Starbucks was looking good. It stalled. Thanks for pulling these up. Starbucks was looking like it was trying to rally. It stalled. Um, well, it was kind of the, a China story, really, because they have so many locations in China. China reopening, but then anything related to China really got hit in February. Yeah. Well, if we haven't learned anything right now, why are you going to trust? Like, if if China's your story, right? Like that story's, you know, done with Wuhan and COVID. And, and Z. So, you're, you know, the small cap story was interesting. Let's, you know, you know, the mid cap story was interesting because they're not as reliant on China uh, as the growth companies. And um, they've held up. So, you know, there's no reason to panic. It's just we're not in a raging bull market. And uh, I had Helene on my podcast. She's great technical analyst for 30 years, first Goldman Sachs, you know, female technical analyst. And she, you know, would expect ranges. You know, it's a hell of a good rally in some of these growth yep. stocks. And, you know, if you didn't sell into this rally, it, it kind of hurts. I mean, Tesla looks really heavy still. Like you rallied into that 200 day declining average. And it, you know, if it busts through with conviction, yeah, maybe we get a term, but like it's heavy. Like, yeah, it's more likely to go sideways for a little bit in a range. It would be frame. bullish if it went sideways, right? If it didn't go back and retest, you know, those panics at some level. So, you know, I think we're kind of wait and see here. I don't have any great ideas. You know, the more the more the stuff goes sideways and the more interest rates stay up here, the more that energy and financials could catch up to the downside that's my only big idea exactly i mean we, we can talk about some individual setups but then yeah. keep in mind that if interest rates continue to go up they're not going to work i mean for example yeah. i don't like, have that many yeah i don't have like many they had a great earnings report on friday huge earnings surprise uh big acceleration in growth um kind of daily okay but if you look at the weekly and monthly it's hell I know it's uh, still stuck below uh, some resistance. It's just working on a new base. Um, and then, you know, there, there are quite a few of them, but as we said, right now, everything depends mm -hmm. on interest rates. Um, so, um, I mean, the one kind of story this earning season so far has been that most companies have reported luck lackluster earnings, meaning they either missed estimates or guided down and then despite yeah. of that, the majority of them went up, especially in January, uh, early February. And mm -hmm. we're talking like Apple and Google and Amazon and Microsoft, even NVIDIA, which kind of gapped up on earnings. I mean, they missed earnings, l l l like three quarters yeah. in a row, negative earnings growth. Now we have negative sales growth. They just mentioned AI, that there's a big opportunity down the road <laughs> in AI. No, they will benefit from AI, but it's still trading at, you know, it's a major company ready to play it. But then to if they lose that low from last week, you know, it can easily close the gap because so many stocks kind of gap up for a day or two after earnings and they mm -hmm. gave it all back. So don't get that excited. I mean, look at like Roblox and that was a nice little break, yeah. Really, you know, and so many of them, they had Ooh. like a gap for a day and then they give it up. Yeah. That's why I'm saying yeah. that 
in a rising interest rate environment, it doesn't really matter. Like in a hot bull market, those gaps, they follow through. Like the yeah. stocks will continue. The good news up. is if these companies truly can turn it around, these, these, these gap and gives will create good bases and create. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for yeah. swing trader. It, it may take six more bounce. months to a year or even 18 months, but you need lower rates. But all this backfilling and scaring of people, these breakouts and everybody rushing to speculate only to give it back will truly build better basis for healthy gains but you got to pick you got to know your companies right now that's a big give back on trade desk so it's, yeah anything... all of them look the same Howard I just showed three four examples but they all, all of them look yeah. the same yeah Confluent uh, Cloudflare CFLT was one that I've been eyeing and it yeah. ran up quickly came back yeah um, so many of them they just kind of look the same look the same yeah. and um, I know a lot of people have been pointing out oh look how strong Europe has been, but then you have to understand that Europe is so much behind with the inflation battle because over the past year, really uh, European governments decided to have much bigger deficit. So they kind of subsidize energy costs for households and especially companies mm -hmm. and something like Italy, Italy typically runs 30, 40 billion deficit every year and they added another 50. So double that just so they can yeah. help their businesses to stay afloat. So yeah. while the ECB has been raising interest rates, at the same time, government has been heavily stimulating and yeah. Europe might have to, might have a much longer path to fight with inflation. Obviously, they've oh, been doing like yeah. heavy fiscal I mean, spending. They, they've done relatively well. I talked about with JC. It's just relatively because it's... Technically, it's yes, just... but that's why I'm telling you why. Because they've yeah. been basically... And it's industrial-based. There's no technology. They've been, they've so. been printing money. Uh, yeah. however, that's the main reason. Not because they're doing... The economies are doing that great. Um, so I think this is like a week that you just there's not much you're gonna miss. It's been a terrible February. Um, and you know, this is this is gonna be a battle of attrition. You know, I'm very light equities. You know, it was a nice rally, it was a chance to lighten up some on some things. You're getting no real strength, you know. Um, ooh, the biotech that's ooh, I mean, pretty rough week, yeah. Uh -huh. Ooh. from biotech yeah and, uh, yeah it's starting to like wear on people you can just see so bitcoin probably week. held up the best bitcoin and tesla probably held up the best here yeah tesla and nvidia the two big leaders uh, bitcoin definitely helped about 50 percent year to date uh, and it's a kind of yeah. risk asset so uh, yeah. yeah i mean as long as those three hold, there is still a chance but if they start to, ro to roll over and obviously <clears> we still have the ai they Kind of building a yeah, but that's just pure speculation. Pure right? speculation. Still they, very early. They report earnings. Yeah, uh, this week. Yeah, but until you still start seeing some clear path and how Microsoft, Google are going to play out, like Google still sold every Google, day. Probably the weakest among the yeah. Take mega cap. Amazon, not, Amazon if, is there too. too. Oh, not looking yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shopify as well. E-commerce is weak. Yeah, Shopify. Yeah, Shopify. Yeah. So. Airbnb gets, also kind of gave up their... Yeah, because of valuation. Like I said, like my number one thing with Airbnb and Uber, you know, I use Uber Eats now once a week. It's just valuation. You know, it has nothing to do with the company. They're executing great. The product's great. They continue to innovate. Their competitors are falling by the wayside because of, you know, um, they just don't have the scale that Uber has. And, um, you know, Uber's just, what is the valuation? It's just, you know, 67. $70 billion. So, you know, for you to think that this is a $200 billion company, that's a stretch, you know, for a company that that uh, may make, you know, 50 cents a share. If you trust the numbers next year, that, you know, that would be, too, these are expensive companies. So you're saying that, in an environment of high and rising interest rates, valuation matter a lot more than it used to in the past. That's what I've been years. saying forever. We're just going to get yeah. compression. And yeah. same thing happened after 99, 2000. It's not that these companies aren't great or going to be around. It's just they got to grow into this valuation. All right. And, you know, the, early, the early investors got the whole benefit of these. And the public market's just holding the bag right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's in a war of attrition. You know, you've got to 
get the right, get in the right mindset, get away from the screens. How, how are you? You're probably high cash still. I'm high cash. I'm just trying, I'm being more careful, more, more nimble, yeah. especially in the past couple of weeks. Uh, I mean, when you see this many companies give back, you can't, you can't gap and give back. You just can't get excited. I mean, very high correlations for sure. Are probably 95, 5% correlations with almost everything pulled back uh, in the past week and a half. Uh, mm-hmm. As interest rates went up, as the US dollar went up. So it's kind of yeah. one big trade. So when the market is like this, just kind of make sure when the market is trending for a few days, just to make as much as you can. And then the rest of the time, just sit and watch. You know, 5%, six month, nine month interest in your savings account. Robin is paying 4.11%. Sometimes it's better to focus on your career and 4% is better than losing your time. And, uh, you know, you definitely, you know, need to stay in market if you're young, but indexing right here versus picking stocks is going to be tough. This is the one that I've talked about for a few weeks, but it's not going to hold interactive. If it... Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, they're also paying, since they use them, they, they do pay uh, 4% on, on use cash. Yeah. And no, any of the you can basically do. use it as a as a bank account because it comes with a debit card. Which Absolutely. No, Vanguard, Vanguard has like a 4% so. money market, daily money market too. People don't, don't be lazy. You can go get your 4%. You yeah, know, yeah. right now, if you're getting zero and you're, you're being lazy, go get that 4% and focus on your career and, 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 you know, finding mentors and getting educated here. But yeah. right now, um, you know, the biggest news of the weekend is Warren Buffett just, yelling at people saying buybacks are good you know oh. it's in his interest to say that because that's what most of his companies do because they're not growing coca-cola um apple but that's fine yeah. like, i, yeah, I read got... that uh, a little bit of that annual report you know he was mentioning that they invested whatever 1.3 billion in coca-cola and american express in 1994 and they achieved yeah. such and such results and i kind of compared to the s p 500 and it's basically about the return of the S&P 500 or less. Um, yeah. Well, MX so probably has done better than Coke, but... You just know. a little bit better, but not that much better if we consider the... the AXP is... A- yeah, yeah, a- AXP, yeah, exactly. A- yeah. Because... So, uh, if, you, if you count away, maybe not, yeah. Oof. I mean, yeah. I, I think maybe I yeah, back, looked at them Yeah, they had about 24. 20 years ago in sideways. Got it. Um, it's one to watch here, too, as it kind of looked like strong and now it's... Anyways, there's just nothing to get super excited. I know Kramer, everybody's making fun. Kramer was saying it's a new bull market. Listen, I don't know. I think it's just a tough market is what it is. And you, you know, VIX is at 20. I don't see an edge. Um, I just don't see. The entire January rally was based on the premise that the Fed is almost done raising and it's going to pivot at some point before year end. And as the new data keeps coming in, the, all the inflation data that came out, just a little bit above expectations, this yeah. doesn't seem to be the case. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they're banging the drum here, China now, Wuhan again, kind of, when when things get boring, the government's just bringing up the China battle. Um, boy, China gave up a lot of yeah, games pretty quickly China, too. That, the I mean, people that, that chase that China yeah, move. Oof. Pretty significant pullback. Uh, yeah, I know Baba's back below 90. Baba, definitely big pullback. All of them, they kind of look the same. That, that's why I say correlations are so high that it's, it's everything is one big trade right now. It's all about yeah. interest rates. The only thing that's not a big trade is interest rates. They just stated a one to six month, one year money markets and money markets four to five percent. Like that's, re- you know, you're fart, farting around with the S&P, you're still ahead and, and just earning cash this year. Most companies don't yield that. And then I think the, Yield on treasury is, is not even taxable. It's tax free, so it's it's yeah. it's kind of hard in a environment like like this really for the S and P to compare. You got to get me really excited to move major money in the stock market. I am seeing, you know, prices come down at seed. We're writing checks. We're being creative, but you know, people just need to be patient. There will be some clearer signs. It'll, there were some nice signs in January, but rates are rates are kind of controlling okay. where we are right now. All right, but I don't want to beat a drum. Everybody have a great week. Thanks for doing this. All right. See you next week.